Hello, Patriots. Thank you for tuning in to this week's broadcast of Mason Cable News. My name is Kylan Adams. And I'm Alexis Witted. So, Alexis, tell me, how you, how's your week been? It's been pretty good. I had two exams this week, but I'm glad they're over. And I'm just excited for the weekend. I'm excited for Africa Night on Friday. Are you going? Um, I'm planning on attending. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Um, Friday... 7 p.m. In, 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 du in Dubray Hall. Make, Make sure you sure all you attend. Dress to impress. I'll do that. <laughs> Late yesterday afternoon, Scotland voted to demand another referendum for Scottish independence. Scotland had previously voted no against leaving the United Kingdom in 2014, but has become increasingly interested after the British voted to exit the European Union last summer, a vote Scotland voted 62% to stay in the bloc. British Prime Minister Theresa May is expected to invoke Article 50 of its governing treaty today, leaving the European Union. Multiple Mason professors wrote about how difficult and complex the role of Brexit will be on the European, European and worldwide playing stage on Mason News. The Scottish independence idea is spearheaded by Scottish National Party leader Nicola Sturgeon. She has gained more power with the Scottish Parliament approving plans yesterday to request a referendum on independence by a vote of 69 to 59. Mason President Angel Cabrera recently wrote an op-ed for the Washington Post titled, While Open Borders Are Crucial for Innovation. The piece discusses how open borders foster growth within the American society, our economy, and our education system. He gives vividing facts to support the claim that immigration has been truly beneficial to our country. In the last paragraph, paragraph Cabrera writes, Few would argue against carefully vetting all who wish to enter the United States and preventing anyone who represents a clear threat from reaching our shores. But that shouldn't mean shutting our borders to one of the main sources of innovation and growth. Openness has been this country's strength since its founding. Let us not lose sight of how we got here. The op-ed states that not only do we need to keep the borders open to ensure the safety of our international students, but to continue the growth of these United States. Welcome to Campaign Week, Patriots. As you might have seen on social media or chalking outside, Mason students are electing the next student body president and vice president along with the 30 student senate seats. Mason Cable News had the unique opportunity to speak with both presidential candidates and their VP tickets. Take a look. My name is Hannah Karst. I'm a junior public administration and accounting major, and I'm running for the position of student body president. And my name is Greg Warren. I'm a junior government and international politics major, and I'm running for the position of student body vice president. So I joined uh, student government my freshman year, and my <coughs> love and passion for the organization kind of grew from there. And then my sophomore year, I was selected to be the vice chairwoman of the government and student relations department. From there, I helped the chairwoman at the time um, run and execute the uh, Mason Lobbies Initiative, which is basically an initiative where we go down um, and lobby our state senators in Richmond. Mm -hmm. This year I was selected as the um, Speaker Pro Tempore of the Student Senate. And my main initiative that year was uh, the reunion for um, all the student government members from the past um, 15 years. And the idea was that we would raise money um, for a scholarship fund for anyone who's involved in student involvement. So anybody who's involved in any registered student organization on campus would be able to apply for the scholarship. And I currently serve as the Speaker of the Student Senate. I manage all of the um, six committees within the Senate. I joined student government my freshman year. I was elected as a freshman senator, um, and from the get-go, I was very interested in the university services-related aspects of student government, um, so specifically dining, housing, parking and transportation, um, IT, and facilities. Those areas are, are very common for students to have questions and concerns about and, and really pursue different changes that may not work for their own needs. I've been able to, to have a really great um, experience interacting with the administration and really working on a lot of the relationships um, between students and administration to help bring some of those positive changes to campus. Our platform is designed around how we as student government can start to truly represent the students and, and through Hannah and I's experience within the organization uh, we've seen over the years some of the difficulties that the student governments had with being kind of a middleman between the students and the administration and, and we hope to kind of shift our role as an organization to speaking on behalf of the students. So I know a lot of people um, have been focusing on uh, the library isn't open 24 hours before finals, which would make more sense than during finals, and that's something that we would love to convey to the administration, um, as well as 
free printing during finals week. That way you can print off all your study guides um, and you can have all the materials that you need because um, we are an institution and we want you to succeed. Some other aspects of our platform that we do want to focus on is our representation within the organization. Uh, we would love to create some reserve seats within our student senate that handles legislation um, such as bills and resolutions for events and different initiatives on campus. We'd love to add different um, seats to the senate um, for representatives of the fraternity and sorority life community, the off-campus community, um, the graduate student community that is on the Fairfax campus often, uh, as well as the ROTC community. So over our three years, our cumulative six years in student government, Greg and I have established great connections within the administration. Um, we plan to utilize those connections to um, advocate for the students. My name is David Kanos. I'm running for student body president. I am a junior. I'm a government international politics major. Uh, I'm from Nigeria and I have a minor in legal studies. And my name is Kelly Dugan. I'm running for student body vice president. I'm a junior here at Mason also and I'm majoring in integrative studies with a concentration in international studies. For me, I'm extremely passionate about service. I helped to co-found and I'm now the vice president of a new ser service organization on campus called the College Service Project. I want to bring a Mason Day of Service back to uh, Mason's campus and with student government being such an influential organization on campus, they can help forefront gathering multiple organizations across campus for this day of service. I'm personally an international student and I want to be somewhat of an example for international students to let them know that they can not only get involved but also be in positions of leadership and I believe that this is one of the great things about Mason we're so diverse but also to bring inclusivity into George Mason University. I would also like to advocate for out-of-state students as I'm from Connecticut and as well as uh, off-campus students. This entails multiple issues that we experience and that's tuition prices, parking, transportation, and more. One of the things we want to do in terms of our platform is um, promote student entrepreneurs on campus. So for instance, we have an idea where George's, is, George's and other buildings here on campus and other rooms are being ill-utilized. They're not being used to their full capacity and we feel like something like a uh, twice a month or once every two months, we would have um, a showcase where a lot of entrepreneurs on campus, people who cut hair, people who do makeup, who, people who, students who are entrepreneurs also on campus, to try and showcase what they're doing here on campus. That uh, promotes our students and it also um, uses these rooms that are not used as much to showcase the amazing students that we have here on campus. A big issue for students on campus is Fenwick hours. Uh, we would like to help to fund extend these hours so that students have a place to go to to study, a quiet place. Also, one of the things we're working on and we're thinking about implementing is the whole structure of student government. We feel that student government should be accountable to the students and to the various organizations that they should represent. So one of the things we want to have happen is to have a, an open house, one at the beginning of the school year, where different student government, both senators and executive, um, the executive branch come and tell organizations what they are planning on doing in the school year and get feedback from those organizations about things that they could do better to help those various different organizations, identities, and groups of people here on campus. Also, in order to keep uh, student government accountable, we also want to have, at the end of the first semester, these people go back to the organizations and tell them this is how far we've gone, this is what we have done, this is what we have not done. And I feel like it'll keep both the senators and the executive branch accountable to the students because at the end of the day we're supposed to be serving the students. Voting opens on Monday, April 3rd and goes through the 7th. You can go online to getconnected.gmu.edu to vote. Mason Cable News held an informal Twitter poll on Monday and Tuesday asking how do you feel about the current student senate and student government president at GMU. Of the 43 votes we received, 12% answered they're doing well, 21% replied fairly ineffective, and 67% replied they don't know enough. If you're interested in attending a student senate meeting, they are every Thursday from 4.30 to 5.30 p.m. in Merton Hall, room 1201. The meetings are open to everyone in the Mason community, and it's a perfect opportunity to learn what student government is currently working on. Additionally, 
The student body presidential debate will begin at 7 p.m. in the J.C. Atrium tomorrow. Both presidential candidates are expected to be in attendance alongside, that right, alongside their vice presidential counterparts. Good luck to both candidates in the race, and be sure to vote for student executive and senate next week on getconnected.gmu.edu. Stay tuned. We'll be right back after this commercial break. <music> Next Thursday, you're invited to Journal Jam at Mason. Hosted by the Office of Student Media, the event's purpose is to celebrate scholarship and creativity at Mason. Join us for food, music, networking, and a fun time. The event will be next Thursday, April 6th from 7 to 9 p.m. in the JC Bistro. For more information, go to studentmedia.gmu.edu. Roosevelt at Mason Global Programs, the Shar School of Government, and the School for Conflict Analysis and Resolution will be presenting an Oxford debate titled, This House Believes the Press Should Be the Fourth Branch of Government. It has been stated multiple times, especially during the French Revolution, that the press is considered the fourth estate or branch of government. Come for an enlightening discussion tomorrow, March 30th at 7 p.m. The debate will be in Innovation Room 103 and there will be a reception after in JC Meeting Room E. International Week is next week at GMU. The annual International Dance Competition will be happening next Tuesday from 6.30 to 9.30 p.m. in the evening at the Center for the Arts. This is a signature iWeek event that features dances from around the world. Mason students and faculty and staff can get one free ticket with their Mason ID at the tickets of the Office of Student Involvement. Additional tickets are $5 and the general public pricing is $10. In keeping with International Week, next Thursday there will be the 2017 iWeek Parade from noon to 1 p.m. All members of the Mason community are welcome to participate in this event. Please bring a flag, cultural artifact, or wear attire representing your nationality, ethnicity, heritage, student organization, sorority or fraternity, residence hall, or other affiliation. Participants in the parade will meet in the Sub One Patriots Lounge at 11.15 a.m. The first 150 participants in the parade will receive an iWeek 2017 t-shirt. To sign up, go to iweek.gmu.edu slash opening slash parade dash registration. On April 6th, Mason will be hosting the first annual Giving Day. This event will be hosted by the George Mason University Alumni Association. From midnight through 11.59 p.m. on April 6th, we invite all of Mason Nation to show your patriot pride and make your mark at Mason by making a gift. Giving Day will be a day for alumni everywhere to join and support your alma mater and specific projects at Mason that resonate with you. Stay tuned for the sports report after Freshman's Corner on Springtime. Also, stick around for our roundtable where we'll be discussing Tommy Lauren and free speech. You're watching Mason Cable News. Welcome to this week's segment of Freshman's Corner. I'm your host, Cody Borden, coming to you from the JC. Last week was officially the first week of spring, so this week I decided to go and talk to freshmen about spring. Are you a spring person and why or why not? I was born in the spring, so I kind of like feel like I have to like spring a little more. I'd say I'm more of a fall person, mm -hmm. not a spring, just because I like the weather better in the fall. I am not a spring person because of allergies. Uh, what are some things you like to do in the spring? I like to ride my bike. I don't know. I, if anyone still does that anymore, I find it enjoyable. Usually just kind of walk around because the weather's nice. So I just I like to take walks. So especially on campus, like I just I've just been walking around. Would you rather have someone do all your spring cleaning forever, or have another spring break? Another spring break. <laughs> I would rather have another spring break. Oh, another spring break, totally. Yeah, because like because cleaning can be fun. Like actually, like I feel like if you're totally present, like when you're doing it, like if I'm just cleaning, if I'm just like yeah, I'm cleaning right now then it's, it's kind of fun sometimes. For our activity, we're gonna take a BuzzFeed quiz, uh, everybody's favorite thing, and it's gonna tell you what season fits your personality. I got summer. Ah. 
I got summer. I got fall. I got winter with the Stark guy. I hope everyone has a great spring. Tune in next week for our next segment of Freshman's Corner. Carson with your sports update for the week. Redshirt senior opposite hitter Jack Wilson earned EIVA Offensive Player of the Week for his contributions to the successful weekend for the men's volleyball team. The captain led the team with 29 kills and 5 service aces. Wilson now has 234 kills and 24 aces on the season, which places him among the top five players in the EIVA for both categories. The Patriots welcome Sacred Heart for an important EIVA doubleheader this Friday and Saturday. The men's baseball team won their first A-10 matchup this past weekend against Fordham, winning two of the three games. The Patriots earned a 2-0 victory in the Game 1 and an 8-4 victory in Game 2. Sophomore Greg Poptak II hit a three-run homer and Brady Acker had a solo home run. The Patriots have hit at least one home run in nine of their last ten games and nine players have hit at least one home run this season. The Patriots are in Maryland tonight facing UMBC. And the women's softball team earned their first A-10 series victory over LaSalle. Sophomore Martina Vidalich pitched her second complete game of the weekend, striking out 10 batters and led a defense that didn't commit a single error. This being only the second game the Patriots had no errors. Mason welcomed Towson earlier today and won by a score of 6-5. to five. The Mason men and women's outdoor track team opened up their season this past week. On Tuesday, three Patriots were recognized for their solid starts. Michelle Walderseps was named A-10 Women's Performer of the Week, Cornelius Claw earned Men's Co-Performer of the Week, and Tyler Benson earned Rookie of the Week honors. That's it for sports this week. Good luck to any teams playing this week and weekend. We will be right back with your roundtable. Conservative uh, commentator Tommy Laren was reportedly been quote unquote banned permanently from her show's network, The Blaze, after comments made on ABC's talk show, The View. On the show, Laren admitted that she was pro choice and said it would be hypocritical to want a limited government while wanting government to oversee abortions. She received conservative backlash that then pulled her off the air from Glenn Beck's The Blaze. Though she was only suspended for a week, rumors have surfaced she is negotiating her exit from the network. On the show, she has held to staunch conservative values, similar to that of President Trump. She has attacked Beyonce, Jay-Z, Jesse Williams, and called the Black Lives Matter movement the new KKK. The First Amendment of the United States Constitution states that free speech is allowed. What are your thoughts on her suspension and supposed leaving? Well, um, I think that the comments that she made on The View uh, are very small and minute compared to the appalling things she said about the Black Lives Movement and a lot of other things that um, have just really shocked people. Mm -hmm. um, so, and yes, she does say that uh, the that free speech is in the First Amendment, and she says that a lot. But she also says that she has like the right to tell people to be quiet. <laughs> so I just think that's interesting that they have chosen to suspend her now um, for saying that she's pro-choice, um, even though there are a lot of been controversial and appalling things that she said in the past. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think going off what you said, Alexis, I think that I also was shocked that this is what got her suspended initially. But I think also those are they agreed with her views so for them it was kind of like oh, okay but when she said something that was against what they believed they went whoa mm -hmm. i do want to say that glenn beck did say on his radio show that he um just because she's pro-choice didn't mean that he did not like her he said that he likes to hire people who had different opinions so glenn beck did say that on his radio show um this past week so i do want to put that out there so we're not quite sure where that came from mm -hmm. about her being permanently banned but i do want to say he did he was quoted as saying that however i do think it's interesting and i do think that it's interesting for her afterwards if she does an interview or talk about it, how she yeah. now can say that she has had discrimination against her for having yeah. different views. And I know that was something she has been against when talking about the Black Lives Matter movement, yes. for example, but now she has experienced discrimination. So how, what is her opinion towards that now? I would yes. be really interested in knowing. What about yeah, you? I, both of you make really good points. I do just, I want to say, I think it is very wrong that she was suspended for 
saying something that he didn't agree with. Mm -hmm. Whenever, like what you said, she has said much worse. She said that she was pro-choice, and that is supposedly, as far as we know, what got her suspended. Right. Um, I believe the media is extremely important politically right now with the fake news assumptions and et cetera. And I just think it's not a good look for the media to have suspended somebody, whether they be liberal views or conservative views, suspending someone because they're not agreed with with mm -hmm. the, the, the higher up on the show. I just mm -hmm. think that looks pretty bad and from our viewpoint watching the media. Yeah, I don't, I don't like the way it looks. So. And it also, and I know we have to go, but I know it also makes the conservative viewpoint, it makes people look at it differently when it comes yeah. to conservatives and media. So that's something that we should look into. Yeah, I agree. Well, thank you for tuning in, Patriots. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Mason Cable News and subscribe to our channel on YouTube at Mason Cable Network to keep up with the latest news on and off campus. I'm Alexis Wooded. I'm Carolyn Adams. And I'm Lexi Hodgson. Have a great week.